Okay, let's go on to phase two. So once your student is really good at snipping and has control and confidence, you can move on to the next phase. So the, I feel the next phase would be is putting a series of cuts. I'm going to give this my example. If I, um, I'm going to cut a nine by eight by 11 regular standard sheet in half. So the goal now that we're going to be working towards is having the student cut across a sheet that's about six inches long with no target. We're not looking at a target. We're just looking at being able to open and close and travel across the paper for six inches. So that's the goal. So the first steps are going to be, can I put two snips together? We can do one. So let's add on to two. So my, my um, idea would be to give a student maybe a paper that's about this wide. I know you can get like paint, paint chips at like Home Depot, you know, those free samples that you can get. These, those would be a really good thing to work on. And they're a nice, heavy cardstock paper, as I mentioned. And then what, we don't have to go for a target. I know it has lines and if they can cut on the line, they can. If they can't, that's okay too. But right now the goal is to cut and travel and put that skill together. And also we're going to try to work on, as I mentioned, the bilateral integration of holding the paper on their own. Um, a lot of times when kids are first learning to cut, they will use the tabletop as a stabilizer, you know, to hold everything together. And that's okay. I kind of just let them do it. And then usually once they feel comfortable, their hands will come up and, you know, off the um, tabletop. So right now, phase two goal is opening and closing and going across the paper. And once you, they can consistently do that for a sheet that's about six inches long, then they're um, they're probably ready to go on to the next phase. So the phase three of cutting would be to cut on a line, a target. So um, one of the I like to have them um, cut on a half inch is the first. It's pretty wide. So I'm gonna um, give you an example. This has about a half inch. This might even be less. This might even be less than a half inch. But you want a really big, wide target. And at this point, we just want to have the kids cut on one straight line. So again, we can go back to that goal of six inches, right? And um, we can start at three. So we're going to get through this phase, and we're just going to have them try to travel along a target and try to stay on the road. The times I use the example, just stay on the road, don't veer off, straight lines, because we're not going to be turning or anything, because that's going to be our next phase of being able to turn curves, because that's where you're getting towards the end of your series of being able to cut. Keep practicing this and keep working at it at a half inch. Once you get good at a half inch target width line, squeeze it down to about a quarter of an inch, and then have kids practice that. So you're going to be making lots of straight, you know, loops like, you know, you can do like make garland is a really good thing to do. You're going to make tons of straight lines. You can loop them together. It'd be a really good activity to do. Um, and the next phase of this piece is you could start working on shapes that have straight lines. So then we could be breaking in to the final phase. It's like the end of phase three into phase four, where you're going to be cutting out shapes that have straight lines. So a lot of times, like I'll give... Um, a student, a target, and I'll just have them, I don't have them turn the paper yet because that's when you're really getting into your bilateral integration. I'd have them just cut straight, 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 and then end it. Straight, 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 end it, right? You're going to go right off the paper, straight, 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 and then you're going to, this is almost like a, you know, a snip. So we're adding, we're taking all our skills together and we're building on them in a successful routine that the kids will feel like they're making a nice progression and they have independence. So if we look at the next final phase and we get into circles, circles are always like my final way. I know we can, with lots of practice, kids are gonna get better at cutting out intricate shapes. So I have an example of my circle and this is usually the final like hurdle to get over into independent scissor cutting. And this is when you really get into that bilateral because the non-dominant hand is actually doing a lot of the intricate work in order to turn the paper. So over the years, I found ways to find tricks of it. So, and we can also work on this too, if you wanna get these as preps with other kids that are different phases, is when you're learning to also snip without a target, you wanna start kids to be able to stop. 
So you kind of like, you make an example of like, this is like a sun and I'm gonna do stop. So you can have these do turn, 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 stop. And you can make this sheet, we can go all the way around and I'll show you the method of my madness to be able to cut out a circle. If you have this pre-prepped for kids, you want them as the paper ends, I'm kind of turning my body incorrectly just so everyone can see it. So you're gonna do snip and then turn. So when the paper falls off, it's gonna kind of teach them snip, turn. We want our elbows at our ribs and we want our opposite hand turning. So snip, snip, turn. So you're gonna turn the paper and then I have, I, my goal is for kids to go straight up in front of them while their elbow is stuck at their ribs, static. And the other hand is doing all the movement. Snip, 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 turn. You can also use stickers. You could put stickers as cues for kids. So you could do a sticker every few inches. So when they see the sticker, it's a cue for them to turn the paper. Thank you.